We all know many, if not most, succulents are easy to spread and propagate. However, in some cases they are so easy it can be hard to contain and control them. This pains me very much to say, but there are succulents that you simply should not grow due to their weedy ways. Because succulents have become so popular, many of the weedy varieties are also making rounds. And as beautiful as they are, if we love our native plants, animals and nature in general, we really should not be growing these. In this video, I'll identify as many weed succulents as I'm aware of. If I miss any, please do leave us a comment below, as I think it's important to be familiar with as many as possible and share. We'll also have a look at the impact these weeds have on native environments and why they tend to be so bad. One of the most problematic succulent genera for many parts of the world is Opuntia. Many of its species are also known as the prickly pear. And yes, this also includes the super cute and sought after bunny ears or Opuntia microdaisies. My nursery to this day gets inquiries about this cactus and surprisingly many people are not aware this succulent can cause quite some damage if it escapes into the wild. Some Opuntia species are edible. They're grown for their fruit and their pads. But many are grown for their hardiness and ornamental value. Here in Australia, I see them in many gardens despite being banned. Opuntia cannot be sold in certain states and is considered a noxious weed. Despite some being edible, escaped Opuntia can cause lots of damage to the environment. Next up is Mother of Thousands and Mother of Millions. There are a few species of Calenco such as Diagromantiana, Delagoans or Tubiflora that have earned this nickname. They are also sometimes known as Briophyllum. I'm not getting into explaining which is which, they are all noxious weeds. As the name suggests, these plants are capable of producing loads of offspring. Each one of their leaves can carry about a hundred small plantlets that can become an adult plant. But not only can they spread like wildfire, they are also exceptionally hardy. If you get one by accident and leave it be, soon you and probably your neighbours will have thousands. Next up is large growing agave such as Americana. These guys can easily escape into the wild and cause havoc due to its size and extremely sharp spines. Just look at the dozens of small spiky agave pups on these huge flower stalks ready to rain down. Because of this impressive ability to spread and the hardiness, some agave species have become environmental weeds in a few parts of the world. Another succulent that is considered invasive weed is purslane. It can be found anywhere in the world, spreads fast and can quickly start dominating a landscape. Aptinia cordifolia is considered an environmental weed in parts of Australia, especially coastal areas where it does the most damage. This here is the variegated version and it spreads super fast, growing over and killing off many smaller plants. The carpet it creates can be incredibly dense. Back to spiky cacti, Moonlight Cactus or Heresia is considered an environmental weed in some parts of the world and can invade woodlands thanks to its tolerance of shade. It tends to ramble on the ground and you would certainly not want to step on this prickly guy. Right, so I think that's it for the worst ones that get mentioned often. Now let's look at one more minor weed that can become annoying but tend not to be a huge problem. Aeonium arboreum is one such plant and is considered a minor environmental weed in Western Australia. I can totally see how this plant can spread fast, escaping cultivation and often have to throw bits out from my own garden. I think one of the best examples of how weeds can destroy an environment is that of Australia. After colonization, prickly pear was introduced and soon rendered hectares and hectares of land unusable. The prickly pear soon dominated the dry parts of Queensland and New South Wales, forming dense growth so bad no one could use the land. 
huge rewards were offered to anyone who could come up with a prickly pear eradication method. About 60 million acres were infested by 1920s. Eventually, a plan to introduce a prickly pear predator called Cactoblastis cactorum moth came to effect and most of the prickly pears were eradicated. There's so much more to this whole story, but that's for another day. If you're interested to read the whole account, I found a fascinating article about it and we'll link to it in the description. The problem with prickly invaders is often incredibly long and sharp spines. I know another nursery owner that has pierced his own hand on a prickly pear. They can also smother small native vegetation, which can have a ripple effect on native animals that rely on these plants. Plus, they are very difficult to destroy as any bits left behind can start growing again. In the case of invasive Kalenko, not only can these spread and outcompete native plants, they are also poisonous and can cause animals to get very sick and even die. Weed control is important as introduced weeds can have lasting effects on plants and animals and the problems can spread up the food chain. I know some of these plants are cute, but growing them responsibly should be considered, especially because our natural world is already struggling so much. And I think we'll end things here today before I annoy even more people. That being said, in my opinion, this conversation needs to happen more. If you know of any other weedy succulents or have something to say, you can leave a comment below. To learn more about succulents, you can subscribe to my channel or go to succulentgrowingtips.com. Thank you very much for watching.